Hi, I'm Kevin Finch, director of Westbound, the genius of West Montgomery. This is further Westbound. We're taking additional material that did not make the documentary film and expanding on some interesting topics. And one of the big topics always comes up about West Montgomery is this. It's the thumb. So we had a nice sequence in the film, and we're going to show you some of that, but expand upon it greatly. We're going to hear from the likes of Larry Ridley, who remembers playing with Wes, George Benson, who certainly got to know Wes, Pat Metheny, who, is, who got to meet Wes and has studied him. All kinds of folks are going to talk about various aspects of the thumb. Really great stuff in there from Russell Malone, too. So check it out. We're going to talk about the thumb with Wes Montgomery. Wes, Wes would always be smiling when he'd sit in the chair and he'd be, man, he, that, yeah. that, that magic that thumb, boy. Woo! I mean, he could play some tempos, too. Yeah. But just using the thumb, he never used it. I, I don't know whether he ever used the, the plectrum, you know, but he had that thumb, boy, mm -hmm. that magic thumb. And Monk on the, on the bass, and Buddy on the piano and on the vibes. Guys. You can recognize it within a second, primarily because of his thumb technique of just using that fleshy underside and hitting it that way, hitting the strings that way. But you know, that ended up giving him his sound too, and not, yeah. not, not just the octaves, but mm -hmm. you know, this kind of this so fat and warm sound that just jumped yeah. off the turntable. The real story is, yeah, okay. it wasn't the neighbors, it was my mother. It was your mom. <laughs> What did I say? He said, Wes, if you don't turn that damn guitar down, <laughs> I'm going to throw you and him out. Both of you. So that's basically when he stopped playing with a pick. He played with his thumb. He didn't never play with none but his thumb. The funny thing was his, his thumb was as smooth as glass because he used to let us feel it. It was smooth as glass. Uh, I know I used to study his thumb. <laughs> Up close and personal. Yeah. And he showed me what he could do. He could take it and bend it all the way back to his arm. Yeah, yeah. I said, man, no, man. He said, well, like nothing. His use of a, the thumb was perpendicular to the guitar. A lot of people who play like, and I even do it too, mm -hmm. play with the side of our thumb, yeah. but it gives it a wiping sound. But as you do this, cha cha, ting, 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 ting. Because it sounded like he was playing with a pit. But he was playing with his thumb. And he had these corns on his on his finger, on his thumb. So it was as definite and as clean as any pick. And but the sound was better. His sound was one of the best on the planet, if not the best there ever was. And then again, I gotta say, the thumb thing, if you play with your thumb, you can play kind of, you know, a Fender jazz master yeah. or something, and kind of get it to sound kind of that way. Is it because your your thumb is natural? Opposed well, to and, the, and it's it's a real fat like mm -hmm. attack because yeah. there's a lot of yeah. action that happens there. I mean, I don't know the that I can give a great sort of physics mm -hmm. example of yeah. why. Right. But, I mean, you can hear it on their records. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, we all know you use this guitar, that guitar, this guitar, that guitar. I don't know that I that you could yeah. tell. Really. Yeah. His finger was as smooth as glass. He didn't have a thumbprint. It's gone. Yeah, I believe and, that. Uh, um, also, he was really powerful with his thumb. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people that play with their thumb, they kind of grip their hand. Mm -hmm. He was like this. He was like, I think, almost even holding on. Exactly. And I mean, it, it was really unique what mm -hmm. what he, what he was doing. And that video that came out some years ago, um, and I was actually quite uh, honored to write the liner notes for yeah. it when they first mm -hmm. discovered them. There's a couple shots, and you know, those of us that are the super like fan yeah. guys, uh -huh. you know, there was always this question, like when he played with his thumb, was he like going back and forth with his thumb? You know, it's like one thing to do all down surf, mm -hmm. but did he do up surf too? And there's a couple like, they had a really cool camera that was kind of over his shoulder mm -hmm. and you can kind of see some upstroke. Because there were a few things, it's like, how did how did he ever get to that? Right. That I was always kind of wondering about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, he was, he, he, he definitely had a, a way of doing it that was probably based on his physicality too. Yeah. This is a hard piece of material that you're going to strike the string with. So it's going to give you a more abrasive, 
um, some might say more consistent sound, right? But it's going to have a certain edge to it. If you use a very soft surface, like your thumb, for example, your fingertips, uh, that's going to produce a less aggressive tone on the string. If we're going to just show that real quick on a single note, here's what it sounds like with a pick versus what it sounds like with my thumb. If you think about it, it's the front edge of the sound that's really different. You know, he would do all the, you know, do all that stuff, but he'd also do the, you know, the chords stuff. And, and, and in the single note stuff. And he combined all that and then had these beautiful compositions, either his or somebody else. So he kind of painted this big picture. So it just got, I, it, I think those, the guys that, that were so musical with their technique are the people that really just, that I fell in love with, you know. And more, they were musicians first and guitarists second. And, and you really got that feeling from Wes, even though the guitar was so incredibly strong. He was, he was a, a beautiful musician first and a great guitarist second. And it kind of served the purpose of the music. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you, playing with your thumb the way that he did is very unorthodox. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a kind of coordination that I think that he just developed naturally. Yeah. If you try to do it because someone told you to do mm -hmm. it, it's pretty fucking hard, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It has to be what, the way that it felt comfortable mm -hmm. for him. You know, sort of like Albert King playing upside down. It's just the way that he went about right. it. He was using his this 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 part of his thumb and mm -hmm. and, and i guess th this fleshy part right here mm -hmm. and that was a, a lot of the way of how he was able to do the octaves yeah, yeah. you know um so technically it's it's pretty difficult but it was pretty natural for him mm -hmm. but i would have loved to have heard him record with the funk finger with yes. the toggle switch you know? yes yes <laughs> because it was so it's amazing cool, stuff you know? he so could have cool. done but a man i mean you know and there were other guitar players that played with the fingers and thumbs before before him but that particular approach has become so associated with him mm -hmm. it's really hard to think about anybody else <laughs> right that is, yeah that's you know true. the thumb and then then then, then the octaves mm -hmm. i mean he wasn't the first person to do that but boy he took it somewhere else and yeah. it's kind of hard to think of any other guitar player when you hear well, first of all, you see them playing with a thumb yeah. and then playing the octaves. I mean, right. your dad owns that, man. Yeah. He owns that. Yeah, I could never play like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I use my thumb every now and then when I'm playing a tune like Road Song or songs that are associated with your old man. Right. I'll play the melody with my thumb, but after that, that's all I got. Okay. I have to, I have to, I have to switch back to, that, back to the pick. People have asked me, well, how hard was it to get some of these really amazing and famous musicians to sit down and talk. When I said the subject is Wes Montgomery, a lot of them were ready to jump in and talk and they were very humble too. They're in awe of their hero and so they're not comparing themselves or anything like that. So that candor from Russell Malone there that he would sometimes use his thumb for a, a song but he couldn't stay with it. We heard similar things like that from other musicians as well. Uh, Wes just uh, very much his own guy and in a class by himself, no question about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this and many of the other continuing uh, elements that we're bringing to you from Westbound with this YouTube channel, Further Westbound. If you like it, hit the subscribe button and we'll continue to bring great little bits of information to you in the coming weeks and months. And thank you as I report to you one more time from Jim Hall's wonderful edit facility. Thanks for watching.